Hey everyone, I wanted to share some quick channel stats before we dive into Duskroon shopping. As with all my videos, if you want to skip ahead, just check the description for clickable timestamps. Current Gemstone and Future Friends A quick thank you to everyone for supporting the growth of this channel and my scripting arts. We've hit 155 subscribers so far, and a huge portion of that has been within the last two months. That number continues to climb every couple of days. Hopefully 200 will be here before next year. This is the channel's 60th public gemstone video since the relaunch a month or so back. The original Duskroon video became the most popular watch content on the channel in six days. Six videos have over 100 views, and we will soon have two videos over 200 views, with the Duskroon video climbing towards 300. I am aiming for higher quality rather than quantity, but I'm not short on ideas. Each day I try to think of more. So far I've written down over 100 future video concepts, and at least five of those have scripts created and some raw footage already recorded. In the past 90 days, the daily average has gone from one to four returning viewers. 11 new people see gemstone content every day and on average, we gain one new subscriber every other day. I could not have done this without the help of my audience and friends of this project. The best way to support is to subscribe and tell a friend. To go further, watch or play videos, react with a like or dislike, and leave any comments when you can, even if it's just a quick hello. YouTube will notice this and push out the content to more people. It doesn't have to be all at once either. Just natural channel interaction over time works perfectly well. Lately, an average of 1 in 12 online gemstone characters have at least tried once or used my Hunt Pro script on a daily basis. It's been downloaded 1,095 times. I am so moved by the backing of this community. I hope we can continue to grow this channel and show the world how awesome gemstone can be. Thank you so very much for everything. Much love to you all. Duskroon has been a lot of fun. So far in this five-part series, we've shown you how to get entries, play the games, and some additional information we missed along the way. We conclude our coverage with shopping and some additional ways you can spend your blood script, plus an exclusive bonus later in the video. The Simicoin store will stop selling Duskroon entries on August 31st around 11.55 p.m. Gift box and possibly event box stop at 1 a.m. Eastern on Sunday, September 3rd. The entire event will close at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday, September 3rd. All right, so we lightly touched on the economy in a previous video. I want to do a bit of a deeper dive with some calculations and personal perspective. To me, the gemstone economy is a combination of how quickly you can accumulate or pay for resources and what other players are willing to trade for that resource. It also comes down to how others perceive you or your actions as to whether they want to conduct business with you. You will find in the moment incredible deals where someone is practically giving away currency lower than the market rate, but that is often snapped up and resold to turn a profit similar to someone selling items on the World of Warcraft auction house. Many of the current players keep track of what one another are trading items for, and you're likely to hear sharp feedback if someone is trying to price gouge or drastically undercut a competitor. Setting your trade value too high or low may not be the best option, but you can adjust your price higher or lower than average as long as it's within reason. Even though a few dollars or silvers trade hands here and there, there's not a large market for and little point in mass farming currency if no one will trade you for it. Usually before Duskroon starts, blood script and entry booklet prices are high. They immediately start plummeting after the event begins and then even out. Right before the final shenanigans, there'll be a quick grab for blood script and entry booklets, so prices could rise slightly. Then, right after the last event, prices will plummet again the business cycle repeats every February and August. Now that I've said way too much, some of you may want to just trade your earned blood script or entries to other players and cash out. 
If that's the case, here's some additional information you may find interesting. The market continues to fluctuate, but roughly one silver in USD equals 0 .000003. One million silvers is about three dollars. One blood script is 800 silvers, so five million blood script is about four billion silvers. In USD, one blood script is 0 .0024 and 5 million blood script is about $12,000. When buying entries from the Simicoin store with a premium discount, one voucher is about 74 cents, so four vouchers would be roughly valued at 986,666 silvers. Take these next numbers with a grain of salt. This is based on my observations of trades happening on the two merchant networks and Players Corner, excluding huge outliers. One voucher usually trades for 309 blood script, or 247,200 silvers. That works out to people paying 1.2 million silvers for the gift box vouchers, or 3.2 million silvers for event box vouchers. The event box costs 3 million silvers to begin with, so you're only gaining about 200,000 silvers per account, but it all adds up. Don't forget the NPC Gladiator, who essentially is a way to trade entries for the effects of the event without having to do the heavy lifting. If you have not sold your blood script to another player yet, take a peek at some of the shops spread throughout the Duskroom grounds. If you're not sure where to begin, try the Town Crier's Buyer's Choice Guide, which has items recommended by other players. You will find a direct link down in the description. Next up, we're going to spend some time running through the Duskroon shopping page and glancing at various items in an improv gameplay style format. If you want to skip ahead, use one of the timestamps found below. Hello and welcome to the show within the show. All the dialogue is made up on the spot and we're going to be taking a long look at the shop listing for this year's Duskroon Festival. There's a ton of shops this year. Looks like starts off with the refund policy, but the shop list number two would be the first one on the list. Goes all the way down to number 73. So about 72 shops this year. Crazy, crazy assortment. All right, let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Here's the refund policy. Make sure to check that out. Uh, we're gonna start off in this shop right here. The price list, of course, is gonna be in blood script. These are alchemy jar containers. This is a fancy kind of item where you can do a command and it sorts your inventory for you. Uh, really efficient, especially if you're doing uh, alchemy work. And of course they come in all sorts of containers. You've got pouches, totes, knapsacks, coats, dusters, all sorts of things like that. All right, uh, moving on down, we got the confection creator. All right, so this is just like one of the older candy tins. When you rub it, produces an item inside. It's an edible item. This particular one, tier one, it produces cupcakes once a day, and it doesn't look like we have any information added as far as higher tiers or limited recipes at this time. Oh, uh, here's some chocolate boxes, candy tins, cookie jars. So this will be producing cookies, produces chocolates, candies, Ooh, you got a pie creator. Now, who wouldn't love to be able to create pies once a day? Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to get a couple of these. These are too cool. Yeah, I think my favorites are gonna be uh, pie, and of course, maybe cookies, chocolates. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to get those three. Ooh, it's an unlock certificate, okay. Unlock certificates, basically you can tear up whatever item that it applies to. Okay, now I know what this is. It adds recipes. So you can add the recipe to your confection creator. So you can make gingerbread, rhubarb pie. Let's see, a piece of bacon studded chocolate. Come on, I mean, you, you have to buy that. Who does not want to create bacon uh, studded chocolate? Raspberry cupcakes, all great choices. Uh, I'm definitely being pulled toward the bacon chocolate. All right, the Art of War. What is this? A magic sling. Let's see what these do. So it looks like these are uh, fancy rune staff sheets. So you get a bunch of verbs depending on what tier you unlock. Let's see, animate dead weaponry. Yeah, another thing with a lot of unlocks, 
you know, some things have to be unlocked to the previous tier before they can be unlocked further. Oh, no way! That's wicked! Sorcerer can animate a creature, and this will give a weapon to that animate that you control. That's so cool. Oh, and the different tiers uh, just boost the weapon that they give them. For those who love, uh, I guess, alcohol, be still my hops. These are portable stills where you can, I guess, put stuff in it and make alcohol for your friends and yourself, of course. You got recipe books that go along with it. All sorts of unlock certificates. Here we have just some food items. Let's see, what's the malting box? Optional accessory for use with a still. Okay, can basically convert things to malted form. Beewares. What, a, what an interesting name. These are illusion props. Well, I'll be darned. I might have to get me some of these too. Are you kidding me? A clouder of cats? Now, you have to have that. Oh, no way. Hand illustrated cards. A mass of snakes. Serpent lovers might uh, like that one for sure. Yep, probably gonna have to do the cats on that one. And a close second is gonna be the Rolton. A tiny fluffy Rolton attempts to butt into your legs. Oh, now I want both of them. See, this is how you can easily spend just 30,000 blood script at one shop. Bumblebees, scrolls, hunting hounds. Now that's cool. All right, best foot forward. Okay, this thing makes a certain feature more pronounced. Okay, it looks like these are limited in use though. You can upgrade it all the way to 20 hours in a single day. So there's at least four hours that you would not be able to have a particular feature highlighted. Hair flowers are feature changing items. There's a lot of really neat stuff in Gemstone that allows you to customize your appearance and, you know, tweak your equipment. You can get alterations done, you can change the names. Uh, as long as it's within the, you know, guidelines, rules, policy. There's so many things that you can just create in Gemstone. You can create unique character identities in Gemstone for sure. Alright, so this begins one of the first shops where you can do an attunement kind of discount. Alright, so you can get into a discount with the attune verb. I had to reach out to the Gemstone community to find the answer to the question, uh, which, gotta love it super helpful uh, apparently the way to get the discount is to try to purchase the item but instead of using the buy verb you would use the attune verb so like attune sword versus buy sword all right i'm going to call these valance weapons they go along with valance arbor so essentially if you have the weapons and the arbor uh, it gives you some extra abilities uh, double attacks other uh, course cooldowns involved a lot of the stuff is just super duper cool. There's all your armor to go along with it. All right, Blades of Glory sell an ice patch skates. Another role play item, all sorts of verbs that you can use. Uh, these particular skates work on ice patches and skating rinks. I want to say Asha weapon, a special kind of white aura weaponry. Those are usually like perma blessed in the hands of clerics and paladins. So tier 1, the special flare ability is locked. Once you unlock it, you'll get some more burbs, and it'll start doing a holy fire flare. And then of course tier 3, uh, the verb of 10 will add a plus 3 wisdom stat bonus, that's cool. And uh, 1x per day teleportation uh, to the temple of whoever you worship. It looks like these are all uh, 25 enchants, so that's 5x. And of course here is your unlock certificates. Blood Tooth Bracer. It has teeth that will sink into the user's flesh. Ooh, and it gives you a Blood Blast ability. A four minute cooldown, it costs 25 health. Yeah, that, that is pretty ridiculous. I definitely, I want it. Looks like there's some bands that might go along with it. If the wearer bears both the bands and the bracer, a special ability Blood Bank can be activated with rays at a dead creature target, 
that can bleed to gain charges and fidget for an enhancive HP regeneration effect. This next shop looks like... It has a striking point quiver. It says, some of the fletchings have been modified and will provide flares to your arrows. Alright, so that's just basically like your arrow making. You can add flares, you can paint them, you can add arrowheads. There's a special kind of bow right here. These are going to be sighted, they've got some enchants. The Bloody Lotus. Origami paper. That's something I always wanted to do in real life. Hey, you can do it in gemstone. I probably have way more success in gemstone than real life, too. Bolt from the blue. What is this? Grants a custom minor firebolt message. That's for wizards. Heaves a molten orb of smoke and flame. Okay. So these are just uh, spell... Changes your spell messaging. A roaring jet of crimson flames. Ooh, there's one for acid. An angry yellow... <laughs> an angry fist of bubbling yellow acid. These are for your cold spells. Minor water. Rippling sphere of sapphire blue water. Ooh, I might have to get that one. Cascading. Conjures a cascade of hissing white electricity. Violet lightning. That's, that's pretty neat. A wild arc of crackling white lightning. That would go well with the other uh, lower minor shock spell. A massive smoking fireball. Gossamer threads of white webbing. That'd be, that might be a neat one to get. Silver savers in the broken coin. This one will save up to a thousand silvers if you happen to die. And you can unlock it to save up to five thousand silvers. And then it looks like you can add more uses. So over time, it can help you save about 20k per day. Compartmentalized Quiver. Off the shelf, it just has some extra verbs in it. At Tier 2, you can start getting uh, multiple compartments. Additional ammo, it's going to be weightless. And you can switch between your types of ammo. A Daybringer Nightbringer weapon. Uses fire flares against the living and plasma against the undead. So plasma flares are a little stronger. And they have a tier base chance to flare twice against the undead. Certifiable is a shop that you can purchase certificates to unlock previous things that you've purchased. Energy shields have a reactive energy flare when you block and energy flares when you strike with the shield. You can purchase handheld pylons. These do extra damage against creatures when you point them at them. A spore bow. Releases stacking spores that lower the defenses of your foe. So further unlocks can silence creatures, spread spores, all sorts of neat stuff. Looks like they come in spore bow and spore staff. Okay. Custom flare messaging. So you have a flare, it has a message, and you can change that messaging. A gambling kit. So you can host little games for chance with uh, other players with this particular item. That's neat. Trick cards. There's so many items. A cigar. Now this is a useful one. The coin pouch. You can store up to 25,000 silver coins in the coin bag weightlessly. This is one you definitely want to purchase. So this next shop is for tents. You've got the tents themselves that can be purchased for 500 blood script. And there's rules that go along with them. It's essentially a way to create a, a little a room for yourself. Uh, it's not private. Uh, but it's just a role play thing. So tents are not creature proof. But yet the unlocks for them are really useful. You can put uh, a trash container. You can have it so that you can set up a tent in a town. There's ways to increase the guest count. Up to 100 people can fit in this little tent room that you create. For 125,000 blood script, it will withstand creatures. Now that's useful. This looks like a storage feature possibly for the tent. Animalistic spirit headdress. A lot of stuff you can purchase, uh, you know, it's fluffy. Some stuff has mechanical benefit. The survivalist kit. I think these have been recently upgraded uh, so that you can unlock them further to create liquid herbs. Useful for pouring herbs into dead people, especially if you don't have a healer around. All sorts of warm clothing, peekaboo hair. Here's more Daybringer weapons. Animalistic spirit weapons. Junk bombs. I think these are new this year. 
So when you're hunting in the wild, sometimes you get trash, chip bricks, table legs, things like that. You can put that in here and fire a shot at creatures and you can fire one time per day. Let's resume our regular schedule programming with a look at the high-end script shop. This event feature began as an auction, but has since spawned numerous spin-offs and now exists as a physical shop during the event. The wiki has a shop list and a sorted list, the latter we'll look at quickly. There may be restrictions on how many enhancements you can make on a particular item, you may also have some attunement discount offers or refund policies available to you, so make sure you read all signs and consider asking other players for advice before making a large purchase. This shop is best utilized by someone who plans out what features they want their ideal equipment to have. Not all item modifications are compatible with each other. Some flares may take the place of a different one, or you may find a way to stack multiple benefits. As for the types of items found, you have products that enhance attack, defense, or magic warding. Miscellaneous services like resizing a shield type. Bards can enchant sonic gear. For those who use enhancive items, there is a wall devoted to customization options. Add unique flares to equipment or purchase rare ores used for forging. The one for 500,000 blood script is for max level players only and weapons forged from it do some wild stuff. Add special scripts or unlock rare armor, shields, or weapons. You even have things for clothing, subscripts, tattoos, transmutations, and modifications for items that do a certain amount of things per day. If I could, I would get the 12-setting teleporter ring for 250,000 blood script. It is well worth the 200 million silvers or six bill investment. If these purchase prices are too low for you, I have just the one-stop shop wheelbarrow for you. Introducing Moon Whopper, where you can purchase some services you would almost never see outside of this feature. Due to the cost of these services, all sales are final. You may only qualify for a refund if what you're wanting doesn't work out. Any item you buy will expire on September 4th, 2023. Don't mess up this purchase. You can find this shop located in room 23773. And now, a very special sneak peek at the staging ground for the upcoming Mondo Shenanigans event. And here's one of the messages you may see during the show. Wow, that was so cool. I'm beyond excited for the upcoming Mondo Shenanigans event and so grateful to Product Manager Worm for letting me share this first look with everyone. A special thank you to staff for putting on this event, the Town Crier team for keeping us updated, the Gemstone community for making this game so much fun, and all channel supporters. An extra special thank you to patrons like Colin, Timothy, and Kaladin. More Gemstone videos are coming soon, including a new learning segment on Ruby programming for beginners. Don't forget to like, comment on, and share this video. Enjoy the rest of the festival, good luck, be safe, and see you all very soon.